with fellow believers. Um, I have a couple announcements this morning. Um, the flowers on the altar are given by Walka in memory of members that we have lost over the years, so we want to thank them for that. I have another announcement here that um, I just got, and it said, please pray for the Shaw family. Jason's mother passed away last evening. She had had health issues and was rather quietly passed away, so we want to keep Jason and Bethany and their family and the Wicks family in our prayers at that loss. Um, a couple things downstairs. There's a sign-up sheet for we're beginning our Wednesday evening meals again, and so there's a sign-up sheet for anybody that would be willing to coordinate one of those meals. You don't have to do it alone, and the food can be provided. You can buy the things at JNC and then to get workers. So there's a sign-up sheet for January, February, and March, so there's quite a few dates we want to fill, and anybody that's interested in helping out there, that would be great. <clears throat> the other thing is there's a box of apples down by the coffee pot there, so there's no cookies today, but make sure you grab an apple or two or ten and take them with you because they're not going to get any better after they sit in the narthex there, so be sure to help yourselves. This week we have... Um, the office will be closed tomorrow, and then Welka has Bible study on Thursday morning, and I'm hoping that we'll see our Bible study books one of these days again, so we'll look forward to anybody that wants to join us next Thursday morning at 9.30. And next Sunday, we are going to dedicate our kids' zone. Hopefully, everything is put together. We'll see how that works, but anyway, we're excited about that. The uh, Delith and Dale and Nancy and I don't know who else have been working diligently down there trying to get that space ready. So we're excited to get that going. And with that, Pastor, I think it's yours. Thanks, Deb. Thanks for a wonderful year of leadership and uh, council considering what you've had to go through individually. That's been amazing to watch that. Um, just some, first of all, obviously, happy New Year to all of you. And it's, uh, you know, when we get together, very rarely do we ever get together on Sunday and on a New Year's Day. It doesn't happen that often. And I think maybe it's, this is my second or third time in, in 25 years, so it's always an interesting occasion. Um, and we, today was one of those lectionary um, times that we actually have two readings, two different readings. Um, the reading that most of you will hear up until the gospel lesson will be the naming of Jesus. That's what this Sunday is. But there's a Christmas, there's a Christmas one also, which we'll deal with, where I will read not from the Luke's gospel. I will be reading from Matthew's gospel about the uh, the the Jesus uh, <clears throat> going out into Egypt and stuff like that. And so that'll be my lesson. Um, and so that we we'll just do some of that stuff today. Just something different. Something. Um, um, not necessarily planned. And uh, let's see, we're going to see. Oh, Sid, how many were here for Christmas Eve? Did you, anybody make a guess? Christmas Eve was 190. 190? Yeah, that's good. That was good. It was really amazing. That the young kids did a great job. They always do a great job, and they always enjoy serving communion and stuff like that, so that's really important. Uh, just an FYI, I already gave this to our our. Perry's secretary, but those who are on the, uh, the Eucharistic uh, ministry teams, we're going to begin having them serve communion one of the, one of the two Sundays on, uh, in each month so that, that the members can see these ministry that these people are offering also above and beyond just taking it from here. So we'll start doing that, and so we'll get kind of a sign-up list and maybe maybe the first Sunday of each month, and we moved, you notice this is the first Sunday, but there's no communion. We have a five, five, Sunday, five Sunday month, and so we just moved it back because it fits our church year a little better. We'll have communion on the second, and then on the fifth, and then we'll move on with that. Next week will be the baptism of our Lord, and, and, and plus we get to have a, a, a brunch, as far as I know, afterwards, so that'll be good fun too. Any other announcements that we need to have before we start? And, and you notice that because we're uh, um, having co the uh, confession of forgiveness, we, uh, people enjoy this stuff. This is my thing, I guess. And so we'll do that, and then we'll sing, and then we'll come back to a brief order of confession, and then we'll sing some more. Okay?
What's that? Sound like a plan, doesn't it? God is good. All the time. time. Let's sing joy to the world. I would ask those who are able to please rise for the confession of forgiveness and stand all the way through the prayer of the day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the Word made flesh, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior, let us confess our sins. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be the messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. We are all self-centered open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God.
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's sing the Kyrie and the Canticle of Praise. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I'll give a children's message if I can get little Colt to come up and we'll just work on this. I know that I've got to find out what he got for Christmas. That's kind of important. You know that. Kind of important to find out what he got for Christmas. Find out what he got for Christmas. Okay. What'd you get? What'd you get for Christmas? You went on a vacation. How far south? For all, all during the Christmas break? Two weeks. Two weeks? Did Santa find you? What's that? And you're three, huh? Well, cool. Well, the, your travel will be great because the story today from our world video talks about escape. And can I read a little video from the book here next week? This next week, Kelly will be starting to do this for the kids, and so she can get to know the kids and be part of it. But this is, talks about 
about a journey. Listen to the story of Jesus going on a journey quote. Joseph tossed and turned in his sleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared in his dream with an important message about his family. He says, get up, and the angel urged, King Herod wants to hurt Jesus. Wake your family, escape to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you it's safe to come back. Joseph's heart pounded. He jumped up and tried to rub his to sleep from his eyes. Frantically, he shook Mary's shoulder. Wake up. We have to leave. Our baby Jesus is in danger. So let's watch the video called, it is called Danger Dodge. Coming along nicely. Perfect! <clears throat> yep, this picture sure is done. Miss Jane is gonna be super impressed. <laughs> when she asked us to draw one of the great escapes of the Bible, I'd say I delivered. Possibly over delivered. Yep, it's absolutely. All right, Otto. Let's see it. Well, <laughs> if you insist. Huh? What is it? It's Jesus' family escaping from King Herod to go live in Egypt. Obviously. Why are they building a mine? They're not! They're tunneling to safety with pickaxes. Even baby Jesus? Especially baby Jesus. He's probably great at digging and wanted to help his family escape. A tunnel might very well be how they got away. Oh, it's pretty good, Otto. But I think mine is even better. It's a desert? It's mine. It looks like a desert. Well, it is, but that's just because you can't see the Hebrews. They're camouflaged to blend in with the background. If you want to plan a great escape, it's best not to even be seen. Mm. And where are the Egyptians who were hunting for them? They went home since the Hebrews were so expertly camouflaged. That and God parted the Red Sea. Well, yes, but everyone draws the Red Sea scene. I wanted to show how they escaped as far as the Red Sea. It's a long ways. What about you, Jax? What did you pick for a great escape? Um, mine is a, a little different. That's all right. Miss Jane always says there are no wrong assignments, just assignments that are two weeks late, Otto, and can you please turn it in on time in the future? Homework for Sunday school has been a little intense lately. The fact that we have homework for Sunday school is intense. As I was saying, my escape story isn't from the Bible. Whoa, what's that? It's my family and I, last summer. Escaping from a hurricane. It's what I thought of when Miss Jane asked us to draw a great escape. You escaped a hurricane? Yeah. We were staying at my Aunt Trudy's house while she was out of town. And we got a warning on the radio that gave us enough time to drive to safety before the hurricane got to shore. Weren't you scared? Yeah. It was scary. And we didn't know if we were going to make it to safety. It must be so hard for anyone to go through something like that. It was, but God helped us escape. So it was kind of like the Hebrews escaped from Egypt and Jesus escaped to Egypt. I thought you said a radio warned you and you drove away. We did, but my parents said God was with us that day. Though I think God might have been driving separately because I looked all around the car and didn't see anyone but me and my parents. <laughs> I'll bet God's car is awesome. Definitely. Well, that's interesting, wasn't it? So is that, did you drive in the car all the way down or did you fly down? You drove, do you ride well in the car? Mostly, huh? I can understand that. He's three, right? 
just three, but anyway, I'm glad you had a Christmas. You know, today I, I chose to do something different than, than you know, we, we all know this, heard sermons about naming of Jesus. There's nothing wrong with that, that text. But when we think about all the, the people that are coming from, you know, Central America and South America in, in our, into our countries, we see all those displaced people. We see all the people in Ukraine are having to worship um, in a very different way. I thought maybe, maybe this story about Jesus exiting into Egypt might be appropriate for us. Because one thing we know for sure, uh, and you'll hear in my sermon, just because we believe in Jesus doesn't mean that life is going to be always so smooth. And so, just like little boys who who have, sometimes have ants in their pants. We get nervous when we wonder if, if God is with us, but God is always with us, okay? Okay, can we fold our little hands? We'll pray, then, you, then it's sucker time. Yeah, good deal. Come, Jesus, we just thank you for coming to us as an infant child to show us how much God loves us. And now as we journey from, away from the manger to the cross, remind us always of your beloved love for your children. Bless little coat, bless mom and dad, grandpas and grandmas, and bless the Shaw family as they go along life without mom. We just ask you to bless them all and lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. I have suckers. I have suckers and or I have, I have whatever is in here. And I have Skittles and I have Starburst and whatever you want. You only want one? You don't need more sugar than that? You're welcome. We'll continue on with the readings. Our first reading is from Numbers 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm is Psalm 8, and we'll read it responsibly by verse. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars you have set in their courses, yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading is from Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for the gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. When they, meaning the wise men, saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy, and entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and says, Get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Out of Egypt I have called my son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Just a, a little, uh, again, another thank you. I know I wrote a thank you note in there, but uh, I have been overwhelmed with the hospitality and the grace and, and the generosity of people here at St. James Lutheran Church. And the next pastor who the Lord will send will be very blessed to call you his people or her people. To you who Jesus loves, to you who I love, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we are just a few days after Christmas. It can be kind of a bit of letdown. The high spirits and high hopes of Christmas Day seem short-lived. Certainly the packed house and the Robust hymn singing on Christmas Eve seems some distance away here on the first Sunday after Christmas. And our gospel lesson from the Gospel of Matthew speaks about the, the reality of life. Matthew confronts the harshness of life even as it trusts in God's reality. Matthew's Christmas story is radically different from the Gospel of Luke. Matthew's story focuses on Joseph. And there's a good reason we know that Joseph was a descendant of David, and so that was important for focus. But Matthew tells us other things. Matthew talks about political intrigue and death threats towards the infant child. Matthew pictures Jesus being born in a very violent world where Jesus has to stare down the kingdom of death on his way to the cross. And no sooner had he been born than an angel of the Lord warned Joseph in a dream and says, get up, take the child his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. As if it wasn't bad enough to be away from home and family when the birth of the child, now the holy family had to be on the run to Egypt once a place of slavery for Jesus' people, Egypt now becomes a place of refuge. This self-imposed exile would be later called to mind as a fulfillment of the prophecy, out of Egypt I have called my son. So as we begin a new year, the year 2022 was a really amazing year for the people here at St. James Lutheran Church. And we really don't know what the year we'll have next year. But I thought I would give you a little of my personal insights about the good news and the bad news of simply following Jesus. Point number one, the bad news first. There is no promise in Scripture that God's people will have a smooth road in life. You've heard me say before, there are some people who believe and if you just give your heart to Jesus, you will prosper in every way, which many call the prosperity gospel. I suspect if somebody would present the prosperity gospel to Mary and Joseph, they would laugh in your face. It's no fun being a refugee in any time in any land. 
Travel is hard, particularly with a newborn child. And we can only imagine that it took time for, for Mary and Joseph and little baby Jesus to make it to Egypt, riding on a donkey, carrying a little baby. No place really to call home, to lay their head, no, no comforts that you and I expect. You know, we understand that it was different times but still, the hardship must have been unbearable. For Mary and Joseph, simply being the providers and protectors of Jesus was almost unmanageable for them. But I think about all those circumstances that I mentioned in the the children's message about all the refugees that we see flocking to our country and all over the world, seeking a better life. And all those refugees and all those people displaced the war in Ukraine, all the believers still gathered on Christmas, still gathered to give thanks. Even on the streets in El Paso, people still celebrated Christmas. Life was unbelievably harsh for Mary and Joseph as it is for many Christians throughout our world. If you think that giving your life to Jesus will make all problems disappear, good luck. It ain't going to happen. So we need to acknowledge that one of the promises is that scripture does not give us a promise for a perfect and smooth sailing in our life. But the good news, what I want you to hear this morning and the good news for all those who are living their life as refugees this morning is that we are promised that God will be with us through all circumstances in life. Our scripture is not very clear on what happened when Jesus and Mary got to Egypt? What did they do? How did they survive? But one thing we know for sure that they were not alone there. The God of grace, the God of love was with them. God's hand was with them. God's eyes was watching over them. Yes, there were dark days and difficult days, and that led them into Egypt. But they also believed in the promise that when it was safe, God would lead them home again. Mary and Joseph had already gone through much in their life, this mysterious pregnancy, giving birth in a stable, the visit of the shepherds and the magi, the angel telling them to leave home, and they couldn't go home but leave Bethlehem. Now, the beloved family are refugees. For Mary and Joseph, Christmas is not good news of extraordinary joy that will make everything easy. Life wasn't easy for Mary and Joseph. Life will not always be easy for you, and life will not always be easy for me. Now to us. When we gather for dinner and there is an empty place, a place at the table, God is there. When someone we love dearly moves farther away from us, God is there. When someone we love does not recognize our love and we feel frustrated and betrayed, God is there. And when we experience the emptiness that we cannot explain, God is there. God comes to the worst places and most painful circumstances to share our suffering, to care for us in the midst of our tragedy. God comes to live among us in life's joys and in life's grief, in life's hopes 
and life's fears. We have not been left alone. God is with us. As I stated earlier, I do not know what the year of 2023 will bring for you individually or congregationally. We pray that God will send a shepherd who will love you unconditionally, who will care for you in the midst of all the tragedies of your life. I do not know what the year 2023 will bring, but this is what I can tell you, that the same God who provided for Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus is the God who watches over you and who watches over me. And that is the promise we celebrate on this, the beginning of a new year. Amen. And we're going to sing a Christmas song, the first Noel.
Thank you. Our celebration on this, the first day of a new year, but also the first Sunday after Christmas, continues on with the, our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And those who are able, please rise as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the mercy of God manifested for our salvation in the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us pray for all the needs of the world. Gracious God, we pray for your church that they may understand and know the wisdom that you provide through scripture. And that we pray for this assembly that your grace will be abounding and reflected in the lives of the people gathered here. God of grace, we pray for the leaders of the church. We especially pray at this time, it's the beginning of a new year. We come with new hopes, praying that someone will hear the call of St. James Lutheran Church and receive the call as if it was coming from God. We pray that the shepherd will be prepared, and if there is a family comes with him, prepare them as well. God of grace, we pray for the bishops and the teachers of, in our Evangelical Lutheran Church that they may be formed by the wisdom of God manifested in Israel and born among us in Jesus Christ. God of grace, we pray for those who suffer the ravage of winter, the hunger, the elderly, the unemployed, the sick among us. We pray for all those who might be hospitalized at this time. We pray for those who are dealing with chronic illnesses. We pray for those who are going through life-saving medical treatments. We pray for those who live their life in convalescent care. We pray for those who are on hospice care. And we pray for those who live their life all alone. God of grace. Gracious God, we pray that this assembly may be refreshed in its ministry to bear witness to the word and the wisdom of God. God of grace. And gracious Father, we pray for the travelers as they have returned home. We pray that they travel safely and that they are renewed with, after time with family and friends. God of grace. And with the Shaw family and all other families in this moment of science, we remember all those who have gone to be with you. God of grace. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all from whom we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take some time to share that peace with our neighbors this morning, and then we'll continue on with something.
Let's stand and sing the doxology as the ushers bring forward our offerings. Just a note, before we do the, uh, the offertorial prayer, I just want to remind the community of faith here that are, are present and those who are watching that when congregations do mission work, they normally do not have financial issues. It's when we start doing maintenance work that we have financial issues. Over the last year, you have focused on mission and God has blessed us with many, many resources. Let's pray. God in abundance, receive and bless this gift we offer. Join our hearts with all the songs of the angels. Strengthen us, share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace. Pour out in Jesus Christ the word made flesh. Amen. Please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive Aaron's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And we ask it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Just let me take it. Okay, 